Hi, this is Dr. Liu. I'll show you how to, uh, to assemble the uh, smart track. So let's take a quick look at what's inside of the box first. Okay, here you can see the box is actually packed this way. There's this, uh, this plate here that's basically diagonal to the box. That's only the only way it'll fit. And there's actually a number of uh, smaller boxes, six of them, around each side of the uh, uh, this panel here. And this box here is actually for a separate entry. I apply for two entries. This one, uh, with everything inside this box, is for the low-budget entry of the open source physical laboratory a data acquisition system. So uh, we're not going to set this one up. So I'll just take it out and I'll put it on the side. And here we have an six boxes and this plate and a separate container, a cylindrical container that will contain the, uh, the, uh, the Pasco track. So you'll receive this in a separate uh, uh, container. Okay, let's see how to set this up. Uh, first, let's take the plate out. Just lay it on the, uh, on the bench. Okay, that was pretty loud. Sorry about that. So, Turn this around so you can see number one here, this is number one hole on the left and also on the right number two hole and number three hole. Okay, and now I'm going to uh, bring the boxes over and uh, take a look at the, uh, the content. Well, let's set this right here. Okay, so this one is the, the Pasco uh, feet. Uh, these are the uh, the two feet that are actually um, going to be mounted on the Pasco track. I'll set it aside first. And this one also for the Pasco track, the, uh, the feet, uh, the track stoppers. Open it up. So the two stoppers right here. For the track, let's set it aside. This one here is the Pasco cart uh, with two weights, so it's a bit heavy. And as you can see, there's a pound in the box, two weights. Let's set this one aside too. Okay, the force box, the force gauges, and uh, we're going to mount the force gauges onto the plate first. Let's open it up, see what's inside. And you can see three force gauges with wires, and the little plastic bag has uh, screws to mount the force gauges. Set this on the side. Here, box number five has Vernier uh, LabQuest, and it has both the, uh, the LabQuest and also the, uh, the power supply. So, as you can see inside the box, a LabQuest and the power supply. Let's set this one aside. Okay, the last box uh, is the, uh, the open source uh, physics laboratory data acquisition system for smart track, a smart track. So, let's open this one up. And you can see there's a the data acquisition system in the box and also a power supply. Set this on the side. Okay, uh, we pretty much went through all the content of the, uh, uh, the shipment. And let's start with the, uh, the mounting of the force gauges here, here, and here. The numbers should, uh, should match. Let's get started. Okay, so uh, these screws are basically just quarter inch 20 plastic screws that goes on the bottom of each force gauge. And uh, they needed to, mount, to be mounted so that the number uh, that you can see is always facing forward. It's not just for the look, uh, it's basically the only way that uh, uh, everything can fit together 
uh, without uh, bumping into each other. So I'll set the, uh, the force gauge number one on the left and then the other force gauges uh, on the right. Okay, it'll be maybe 30 seconds. Okay, so now as we can see, I have number one here with a one facing forward, number three, and also number two with a two facing forward. Just make sure they're, uh, they're hand tight. They don't have to be uh, tightened with a, uh, with a screwdriver. Okay, and you can also see there's actually a little stub uh, on the number one force gauge to, uh, to actually hold the other uh, track on top of it in position. There's also these, uh, these screw holes. Uh, one of them will actually have a uh, screw tightened to this and this one here, unfortunately, the new version of a Pasco uh, track actually covers that hole so we'll only use one screw to secure the track on top of it. Okay, so let's move on to uh, add the, uh, the Pasco track with its uh, feet and also the, uh, the track stops. So let's take these two boxes to the other side of the room where I have the track here. Okay, so once again, these are the stoppers. They're supposed to be uh, on each end of the other uh, track. And this one has the feet. I've uh, put some uh, convenient label here. This is the left. It's supposed to center around 40 centimeters. Somewhere around here. And this one is the right, centered around 80 centimeters, so around here. Okay, so let me uh, just set the, uh, the camera up and give a moment to uh, put everything together. Set it up here. Okay, so now I have everything in position. The magnetic bumpers basically uh, facing uh, inward. It's hard to see the magnetic bumper sign right here. Looks like a magnet, a horseshoe magnet symbol. And here this is a 40 centimeter mark. 40 centimeter. 
an 80 centimeter mark, this 80 centimeter, basically the center line here uh, matches the position. So now we can put this on top of the, uh, the force gauges. Let's go ahead and take it to the other workbench here. So I'm just going to roughly put it on top and later I'll align this a little bit. So uh, look at this corner right here. This circular hole here should actually match the, uh, the threaded hole below it. And inside of the, uh, the plastic bag where you find the, uh, the black screws to secure the uh, force gauges, there's a couple of these, uh, these screws. You only need one of them. The other one is just an extra. So basically just hand tie this. Uh, before you tighten it, basically just get it on first <clears throat> and then you want to uh, make sure this side, uh, remember there's a little stubs, uh, basically that's sticking out of the, uh, the force gauge, kind of just, see that? It kind of sits inside because there's actually a circular hole here on the, uh, on this plate. So that actually sits in the hole and if you want to move it, it kind of restricts the motion sideways. That's good. Uh, if it's actually outside, like this, you actually be able to move. Now it actually sits there nicely. So now we can tighten this screw just a little bit more. Nothing uh, has to be so tight, just, uh, just hand tight. Okay, so now the mechanics is done, we should uh, go ahead and uh, connect the uh, electronics together. This is basically pretty easy. Let's just push this inward a little bit and uh, maybe organize the cable a little bit before I start uh, putting electronics on. I just kind of hide the cables underneath and here I have three plugs each one of them has a number this is number one so let me open up the uh, open source physics laboratory uh, data acquisition system box just uh, gently pull out the box set it next to the plugs and pull out the power supply set the box aside And uh, here's numbers on the uh, on the box, so it's pretty easy to just uh, just connect these sensors uh, according to the numbers. So one, and two, and a three. And I just plug in the power supply AC adapter to the wall. So this is basically ready to be uh, to be powered. As you can see, the box has a um, power jack right here. This is AC adapter. So this is ready and set. And let's burn the uh, Bernier Lab v, uh, Lab Quest. Excuse me. It also has an adapter and also the, the main unit. Here. Um, I'd rather connect this to the adapter because the main unit uh, battery of life is not great. I'd rather just have it on AC adapter all the time. And notice that I'm not leaning the uh, or setting the, uh, the, uh, the wires on the on the track because the track is sensitive to uh, to to forces or weight. Just connect the, uh, the power to this and uh, just press the button to power this up. Nothing fancy, it'll take a little while to, uh, to start up. So, this one on the other hand is pretty easy. You just plug in the power. Let's see if I can do it with one hand. Okay, that just did it. And uh, the first screen you see is balance track. And the three numbers are basically numbers read from the, the three gauges. It looks normal. There's no huge fluctuation. And uh, I'll take a quick look here. There's no obstruction to the uh, to the track, so that's 
it's basically well balanced and you just press the enter button here and then you can choose the, the track length this one actually this is left and right you can choose 1.2 meter and then just enter there so now it shows 60 because that's the center and um, that's basically set up